Richmond, please help me welcome at this time, Steve Burns, Donovan Patton, Amazing. It's, it's 2024. <laughs> Blue can legally rent a car. <laughs> and look at this crowd. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I, I know it's early in the day, but uh, how, how have the folks in Richmond been treating you so well? I love Richmond and I love you all. <laughs> In the city or a galaxy con? In the city. Oh, okay, no, no, I really, I can lower it in my hand. <laughs> so, so who here, who's never been here before? Yeah. Have, you, have you been able to go out, uh, like, uh, where, where should the newbies go out and eat? Yeah. In the cafe! Mama J. I think he's the guy who goes out somewhere. Classic. Right vegan options. Where is there anywhere with some vegan? Eat some vegan. Where's that? Daily vegan, daily vegan, daily vegan. Daily vegan. I was going to say Billy vegan sounds like if there's Billy involved, then that sounds very vegan. Kava. 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 He's going to eat it all of them tonight. Kava. 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 Like a, a, a pub crawl, but like a, a blue crawl where you just uh, go to all of them. That is sounds. <laughs> so I, I have to ask, when you, when you come to uh, a new city or even one that you've been to before uh, for shows like this, do you ever get a chance to go out and see sites or is it usually airports, hotel, convention, hotel, airport? Dang. Well, we're here to see you. Woo! Actually, Woo! this is Woo! the most important part. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Best part about any city and any city that I've ever been in is, is the people. Um, and so there's no better representation of the people that people. To, to come to the city and, uh, and, and meet everyone. Especially, you know, I don't know, I, this is my first time in Richmond. I love everyone that I've met so far. Everybody's been so kind, so. That's nice. Yeah. Angela and I are convergence, so this is our very first galaxy. No. <laughs> I know that the, the stereotypical question is, did you see the show, you know, being as popular as it is? And of course, the, the answer is always, you know, how do you prepare for something like this? This one, you and me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 1995, oh, yeah. Angela planted the seed at Nickelodeon. I'll let you tell the story. We searched. I just loved it so much that I was like, I hope you have your Emmy <laughs> job checked out. We, we were like, like, we haven't even have the pilot yet. <laughs> So at what point did you all realize the show's popularity? Two weeks ago. <laughs> um, I knew the show was while we were doing it back in the day when y'all were in school. Um, I knew intellectually that the show was reaching this many people and we were doing assessments for ratings and we were on TV. Wow. I, I understood that. But, um, I think these guys can relate. The show felt very personal and very small. You gotta keep in mind, we, uh, when we filmed the Blues Blues, the hosts of Blues Blues, uh, we're kind of in a room without a corner, it's my room is blue, their room is green, and a lot of lights, and even the director and the director were kind of behind things. So it was really just me. It felt my experience. It was me in a room with a camera. Wow. And that camera was you. Wow. So it felt like a very personal experience. It felt like a personal conversation. 
Thank you, Steve. And it felt small, you know? And for me, I didn't really fully understand the reach and the impact of the show until a few years ago when I did that shout out video that kind of went viral and then I saw the response to that. That was the moment for me where I thought, my goodness, you know, we are one of the shows to you that I had as a child for me. We're one of those. So for me, it was very easy. It was, you know, and fully grasping. And I still can't really get an argument. It's got to be harder for, for an Android kiss. Well, you do know, man. <laughs> I feel like I knew when I saw kids on the beach playing with uh, Shuffle and Tail. Or they were oh. pretend they were gentle Shuffle and Tail. <laughs> Which was kind of my favorite. No, moment. that was mine too. I was in New York City subway and I saw a little girl with a loose, loose backpack barking to her mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, from the head to that little girl. That was absolutely amazing. Did you bark at her? <laughs> you know, I, I've learned not to bark with the little kids because they think I ate her. Because <laughs> <laughs> I used to do that and they'd have a little car. Like, mommy, she ate me. That blew the that's awesome. She just opens her mouth and then <laughs> So, a question that, that I have had for years, and, and, and Tracy and Angela, hopefully you can, you can help me answer this. Um, now we have Steve. We have Josh. We have Joe. <laughs> as opposed to Doug. Uh, yeah. is, there, was there, is there a reason behind this? It's a middle child thing. Oh, it's a little thing. The preschool team that we have. Yeah, I do think that they actually act a little bit like that. Our first, our middle. It's Joe time. Totally. <laughs> but um, we were calling it the Joe Show when Steve decided he needed to go to college. Um, and that was kind of what we called it. And then we realized how hard it was for Steve at the time to be Steve, right? So that's his name. And also wanting to be there for the kids in such a specific way, of course. Um, and as an adult, that was difficult. In our opinion, we thought that that was hard. And so we had said to Donovan, um, we think that maybe you should be named Joe. It's also easier to say. Yeah, he said a hard time. What's the point? I don't know. So, I love it. I thought I Joe was that. decided on before I was even hired. Like, whoever it was going to be. Joe show. Be yeah. it Sebastian or Daniel. Who were, who were the other actors that were in the They're on a list. Uh, no, uh, uh, yeah, it was going to be Joe one way or the other. There was a vote uh, amongst the, uh, you know, everybody who was working on the show at the time. And I think Joe was the one that, that won out. It's um, we did the electoral college. It got very I feel like it was your choice. We gave you a yeah. choice. So when, when I auditioned for the show, uh, on this, in the script, it said Nick. Because it was kind of like on the script. And I was like, oh, we're going to call it Nick. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> Nick Lodi. Josh, if that's okay with you. And I went like back and forth about it, and you know, while I don't, in, when in real life I don't have a, a magical blue puppy as much as I wish I did, um, the character is so much uh, so a part of me that I aspire to be. Um, you know, patient, um, inquisitive, and, and um, really vulnerable uh, like all the time. And so, I thought Josh was kind of the perfect thing. So why not? It's, it's who I hope to be in every moment of my life, even though I'm a human being and imperfect. But um, yeah. So, but then, can you imagine? That? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, again, so Eric, we do have a mic. So if you do have questions, please go ahead and start lining up as people go over there. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, my last question before we get to our audience questions, uh, and it's a question that I like to ask uh, a lot, and that is. Um, while at conventions, and this is your first one, so I, I, I'm definitely interested in, in your uh, in your thoughts. But at conventions and, and maybe even at the studio, uh, you know, filming things, whether it's in the green room at a table across from you, who has been that one other 
of celebrity that you absolutely fanboy out about. And while you think about this, does anybody, uh, does anybody know WWE Hall of Famer Kevin Nash? Yeah. I asked this question to Kevin Nash, and he said that his person was Steve. Whoa, let's go. That's awesome. <laughs> you look bigger on TV. Thanks. Elmo, Elmo told me. And he was like, dude. That's awesome. You've been trying to pitch, like, uh, us being on the WWE as Steve, Joe, and Josh for like forever. Can you imagine us searching for clues and being a wrestler? Uh, let's go! Netflix, here oh, we go! We have like a ring that's shaped like a paw print and we like tattoo people. Yeah. Like, we're giving clues. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you Let's go. So, uh, you know, are there folks who you have fanboyed out that you've been like, oh my gosh, like, either maybe you couldn't speak to them, or maybe you spoke a little bit too much with your fucking mouth, and you're like, maybe I said too much. I'm pretty good about not saying too much. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> reaction I was looking for. <laughs> I, I have a habit of putting my foot in my mouth because I'm I, I'm not good with names. So I, I'm terrible. I'm terrible with names. And so I, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly, I'm pretty bad. But as far as like people that I'm super, super excited to meet in person, everybody, if that's fair, but also like because I, I did musicals in New York and um, uh, she's somebody that I really, really look up to. I, I know that Kimmy yeah, Glenn cool. is here, and so I'm very much looking forward to saying, like, hey, I'm a huge fan. Also, she, um, being an Asian American, she was in a show that had nothing to do with her being Asian American. And uh, so I'm really, really excited to go see and tell her that, and then uh, extract my foot from my mouth and disappear into a pool. I'm excited to see Danny Rojas tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you're, you're, you're a big fan. Uh, yeah. 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 I, uh, I don't know, but uh, my favorite film is Rocky. Let's and, go. Uh, go. And my number two favorite film is even close to, you know, and like I love that film. And uh, last year, uh, that's why I'm wearing it. Apollo. <laughs> Carl. Uh, Carl. Uh, I was unable to do it, and my manager, I said, Steve, and he connived to force me into the room with him, and just left. <laughs> <laughs> and I did everything you're not supposed to do. I, I think I spoke to him for three minutes and didn't actually say anything. Mr. Rose, you don't understand. You have no idea just how, because you were just so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, for me, uh, it's hard to explain, and you just, I couldn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's good, that's good. What a picture, what a picture, great picture. <laughs> but uh, I was very sad, very, very sad. I was looking very forward to yeah. doing better this time. Oh. Uh, Tracy, is, are, there, are there any folks here that you are excited to meet? I have to say, I'm going to be Michael Hall here. So, and we right across, and I have not been able to lift. So, yeah, no, it's right across from our group. It's literally great. Right. Maybe you'll let me know. You should make him throw you a football, Johnny. Be good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. I'm excited about that. I saw Senator Palpatine, and I got very excited. Yes! Woo! <laughs> 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 
our first question here. So, oh man, we have a long list. We're trying to get through as many of these as possible. Hello. Uh, uh, What's your name? My name is Christina. That's Christina. You look awesome. Hi, <laughs> Christina. I met Tracy earlier today and got her autograph. Um, but my uh, question is for all three of Steve, Joe, and Josh. Um, I grew up with Steve. Well, first off, you know, I grew up with Joe. I don't watch when Josh started, but I still love you. <laughs> I did watch um, Big Blue Adventure, the movie on Paramount Plus, and I just wanted to know what it was like for all of you to come back and reprise your roles as you're trying to find blue in New York City. Well, I mean, that was so much fun. First of all, the stuff that this guy's doing in that movie is amazing. Josh, like, superstar. Amazing. Yeah, so it was great to see him, you know, go out and be in the real world, and then just to show, like, to go full Josh. Yeah. You know, with his dancing and singing, and, and I thought everybody that, that was there, uh, uh, that was involved in the movie, uh, you know, was, was also just amazing. Ali Stroker did a fantastic job. B.D. Wong was so cool. It was, it, that was, for me, it was really awesome to meet him and see him. And, uh, and yeah, I, I, I don't know. Yeah? So, so many people. Alice Sweater. Oh, my gosh, that was so much fun. Dude, dude, yeah. So it was, it was just, and I, I'll work with these guys anywhere. I'll, I'll, I'll work with them any time. It's been, it's great. That's another fun thing about being here. It's just selfishly, I get to see them. You know, I think that's my favorite part. Oh. Like whenever Steve, Donovan, and I, and then in turn whenever Angela and Tracy are ever on set, it's the best because it's like you get to work with family, and then you. Get, It's, it's the greatest gift you could possibly ask for because you're doing uh, something that you love to do in a completely new setting because we're, com we're just in a green box <laughs> the entire year with 12 people and we don't, you know, depending on what time of year we get to the studio, it's dark and we leave the studio, it's dark. But this time we get to be outside the entire day with other people and it's wonderful. Um, and dancing through Central Park, it, it, it's, you know, it's, It's a dream to be able to do this job in any capacity, but to do it uh, in New York, which is such an important place for a lot of us, is, is huge. Yep. I loved, I loved, I, I, I loved being with Steve. Yeah. I loved it. It's such a joy. It's so fun. Uh, because we kind of say, well, okay, well, what happened to Steve, right? And then we decided, I mean, he went to school, right? He went to college for forensics. And now he's the world's crappiest detective. So fun. And it's so great to have no responsibilities and just kind of show up and eat a cookie or stay up for Josh has to do all the hard work. And they decided it'd be a good idea to put Donovan and I in a hotel room together for two weeks, which was so fun. <laughs> so the movie was a joy. It was, it's absolutely a love. One of my most favorite Blues Clues moments, reprising that role in particular and reconnecting with um, the, the show in that way was uh, wonderful. Thank you. Blues Clues was phenomenal. I loved it. As soon as I found you guys were playing, I got to watch them before they came out of New York. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. What's your name? I'm all right. You just know I'm I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, so, um, growing up, growing up, I, first off, loved Steve as, as a host. It was a big event when um, he moved on to college. But also, my point is, my mother could not make me stop wearing the green striped shirt. <laughs> so I was wondering if any of y'all, particularly the host, but any of y'all working on the show have collected any like similar shirts to your character or any characters on the show. You see what I'm wearing now? Oh, yeah. You see what my son in the audience is wearing now? Stripes. He got my stripes. <laughs> On the record, I have never stolen any props from the show. <laughs> for, the for the record, that's right, thank you. For the record, I've never, I've never done it. I will never do it. And I will never enjoy those things in the privacy of my own home. <laughs> that's all there is. Legally, legally speaking, I, I have a uh, smoking jacket that's made out of the same material as the thinking chair. Uh, oh, yeah. Really cool oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. I was not giving that back. <laughs> that's what, what was that for? Yeah. What episode? Uh, it was for, I think, the 100th episode. Oh, 100th episode. 
Yeah, yeah, it was a good one. Too. You got the top of the whole song or something that you guys did for that. Oh, I, I, don't that know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't remember. I stole a bunch of shirts. For the record, you did steal. No, I did. I took them. I didn't steal. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello. Chris Ray. My name is Stevie. Party ID. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um. Oh, is there a story saying you guys were a big part of my chat? Well, sick Josh. I'm taking this. I'm taking this. Don't go watch the book when you're moving in New York City on Disney Plus. I'm oh, sorry, Paramount Plus. Don't no spoilers, but um, um, my, can I have two questions? Uh, if we can get through them. Oh. She wrote the movie. Steve went undercover, and so you know he was undercover for a while, and his location had to be kept secret. For, or, you know, he was on a case, possibly. Witness protection. Yeah, something like that. He was deep undercover, deep, deep cover. For the protection of the family, including the, the, the Spice Kids. Yeah. <laughs> society of they couldn't. They couldn't. Uh, they couldn't divulge that kind of information. Kind of notes I needed earlier. Demo phone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, when we, you can ask if, if you go uh, to the table after uh, this Q and A. Uh, that's a good idea. Ask about it. Happy birthday. birthday. Um, see, just not seeing. Just say happy birthday. Happy birthday! 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 Happy I think being your voice has been the most magical experience. I just want to say that Donovan and Josh and Steve are my childhood. Donovan and Steve mostly my childhood. I. You don't have to keep your childhood going for as long as you want. You know what? You know what? That's true. Woo. Never too old to be a kid. Thank you so much. Thank you, Allie. Thank you, Allie. Hello, what's your name? Hi, Rihanna. Hi, Rihanna. Okay. Okay. So for one, I, I was thinking of a little answer thing, but no one asked. And I thought, you know what? Let me just ask one of the guys who are going to ask you guys a question. Oh, yeah, please. Yes, yeah, just so that we thank you. Absolutely. Okay, sorry about that. But funny thing is, and I thought about a lot of different questions I wanted to ask you guys, and I thought, you know what? Let me just do the one I thought of in the middle of the line on the spot. Um, if you guys could ever do another movie like you did with King New York, would you want to do it? Ooh. A hundred percent. I think we're about, thinking Hollywood was the second one. We would love to do it in Hollywood. What if you did one? I don't know. In Richmond. Yeah, that's a better. You all say that. You should write in about us doing what we're doing. What about Antarctica? We're scared to the future. We can do a blues cruise. Oh. A multi city, multi country. Right it. Blue gets everyone on a boat, and then she leaves three clues as to where the heck it is we're going. So we don't even know. I've always, Sorry, wondered, I've always wondered can we skip you through time? I've always oh. wondered, can we? Well, we could go. Blue to the future. People have never smelled better than they do right now. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
That's right. Hello. Hello. How good is that sweater? How good is that sweater? Yeah, Tracy, I spoke with Steve earlier. He told me to show you this. I love it. Um, so my question is, when the reboot was in the works, um, this continue, um, I will just say, when I watched the pilot episode, it was a shock to me to see that we're getting email now instead of we're getting sort of regular letters. Oh, and now also a phone. Um, so um, I was, I guess my question is just, um, how did you, like, were you sad to see, like, the original things go, or was it just, like, did you know, like, you know, you had to keep up with the time, so you had to kind of change things to do it? We had so many meetings of what to do with the notebook, because we loved drawing and keeping, you know, the fundamentals of writing on paper, um, but we also wanted to keep track of what preschoolers knew. So then we did a little bit of both, right? So that you can turn around and see a FaceTime phone call and seeing a video for little ones, right, would be even more impactful because we can see that visual. And so we definitely thought we could make a compromise there. But we loved seeing the nostalgia and seeing the original, but then kind of for today's kids, thinking about email or texting or things that they might be a little bit more um, comfortable with or have seen in their lives. Good question. Thank you. What? Question. Hello. Um, so, my question is like, so like me and my brother and my friend like did kind of like a greatest hits Facebook like of Blue Clues like watching it to like prep for this. And as soon as I got to like one episode, I knew I had to like ask what like spawned like the Blue Room show. Like what like, 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 like where did that come from? Everyone had always written in about wanting Blue to talk, um, and also kids wanting to hug Blue, right? And so as an animated, 2D animated show, it would be very, very hard to hug Blue. And so it started from there, uh, thinking about the amazing puppet community that we have in New York, and meeting with puppet builders to make her fuzzy and huggable, and that we potentially could have a space where real kids could come on the show and give her a hug and then the idea to make her talk we thought we needed a very special imaginative place for her to go where she would transform into that huggable version of herself and then that way it would be okay that she talked oh. another good question that was amazing thank you so much I should have said. hello what is your name hello Do you have a question? Yes. <laughs> what is your favorite part of Blue Clues? Everyone in this room, <laughs> everyone in this room, that's my favorite part of Blue Clues. Because we wouldn't be here without you, and you know, we work in a vacuum, being in a room with our peers, and we don't ever get to actually meet the people that we're talking to on the camera. So my personal favorite part about Blue's Clues is you. And what's your favorite part? Everybody is sweet. Oh, oh they're sweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, when we started the show, it was just like a PA going, the clue, it's over there. <laughs> uh, uh, the clue, the I, you. Right? That's when we started. But eventually, eventually we would have one person whose job who's, was to designate every other character. And we all had a version of that person who would do funny voices and be our acting partner. Actually, and, and most of the time, that person's name was Katie. Katie was McQueen! Katie McQueen, they got now Katie McQueen Deaker, and Katie Buck. Um, uh, but Katie, this is a cool little piece of trivia. I get to do uh, a 
character called Cat Rat on a new show that, that Tracy uh, created called Gabby's Dollhouse. And the woman, yeah, Cat Rat, Cat Rat. And the woman who is the voice director for that show is Katie McQueen Beaker, who was the one doing all of those voices. So it's like I get to work with her and now she gets to tell me what to do. And you know, back in that day, like, you know, I was mildly irresponsible on set to say the least. And so she put up with a lot. So the fact that she's still nice to me is a minor miracle. That's the power of the Blues Clues family, right? The Blues Clues yeah. Mafia. We stay together. Yeah, it's very, very cool. If we like you. Thank you so much. Great question. Great question. Thank you. All right, so we have a little bit less than 10 minutes, and we're trying to get through this as much as possible. Hello, what's your name? Matt. Hi, Matt. Matt. I'm sorry, it's really the show. Well, most of my questions were already asked, so I'm trying to figure out a new one to ask. Uh, so I want to ask uh, for uh, Steve, uh, I almost called you Joe, I know it's not, but I'm so sorry. Right, thank you. Steve and Josh, with uh, lots of movies becoming really popular about famous singers and actors, if there was a movie that was made about the history of Blue's Clues, who would Ooh. want to play you in that movie? Ooh. Ooh. Not what? Can't say each other. Wouldn't that be a weird movie, though, if we played each other? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like, you know, that would be... Oh yeah, no, no. I, I, I know who I would want to play me. Ooh. Ooh. Dan Bautista. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, that was good. Jim Carrey, maybe? Oh, yeah. Yeah. let's go. Yeah. I think Grover. <laughs> Perfect. Like the mother. <laughs> like the mother. Grover is the best mother. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. It was so hard. <laughs> Tracy invented the clues, and she's like a brilliant artist. We can't. We I can't. We can't. It's so hard. <laughs> try to draw the so clown. If you got an autograph from me, try to read it. So they had like the first couple. They were trying to find uh, like somebody to draw the clues in the first season, and they're like, Josh, he to ask you to do this, but can you draw them? Yeah, sure, no, no worries. They're like, all right, you have to draw it in less than 25 seconds. It has to look exactly like this thing, and your arm has to be in this contraption. It's a camera. It's pretty close. You can't see it. It's impossible. It's terrible. We would go through so many different animators who would be like, I, I cannot. I simply cannot do it. It was the hardest job on set. But Dave Comer did your thing, right? He was actually, yeah, Dave Palmer was the, the head of uh, uh, Ian. Ian. Oh, Ian, well, Ian Chernikov did mine. Wait, he did yours too? So that means, hang on, this means Ian Chernikov did clues left handed and right handed. Oh, that's your special thing. Are you guys nice? Go Ian! Go Ian! We can't give Ian those props tonight, dude. I forget who did it, but it wasn't me. I thought it was Dave Palmer. It, it was not us. It wasn't us. <laughs> it wasn't Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hi. Woo. Um, I, first of all, I just want to thank you, Steve, Joe, and Tracy for being such a huge part of my childhood. You made it awesome. Um, so, I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous right now. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, 